How would you feel if justice was within reach but remained untouched due to a system's inefficiency? Picture this. Every moment of your traumatic experience meticulously collected, sealed and stored, only to gather dust in a forgotten corner. This isn't a hypothetical scenario but a harsh reality. Across the United States countless rape kits lie untested, their potential to deliver justice untapped, a backlog that leaves victims in a limbo of uncertainty. This is the grim reality for many victims of sexual assault in America due to the backlog of rape kits. Thousands of rape kits are sitting untested in police departments and crime lab storage facilities across the U.S. It's a chilling statement to comprehend, but it's a harsh reality that we are currently facing. According to the Department of Justice, an estimated 100,000 rape kits are gathering dust, waiting to be tested. That's right, 100,000. But why is such a staggering number of kits untested? There are a few reasons. First, there's the issue of cost. The average cost to test a single rape kit is between $1,000 to $1,500. If you do the math, that's a significant amount of money required to eliminate the backlog. Second, there's a lack of resources. Many police departments and crime labs are understaffed and underfunded leading to a slower processing time. Not to mention the process of testing a rape kit is time-consuming, taking anywhere from several weeks to months. Third, there's the unfortunate reality of skepticism and victim blaming. Sometimes investigations are halted if the authorities doubt the credibility of the victim's account. This not only discourages victims from reporting assaults, but also contributes to the growing backlog of untested kits. Now consider the impact of this backlog on the victims and the justice system. The delay in testing these kits means that many victims are left waiting for justice, sometimes for years. This prolonged wait can significantly impact the victim's mental health, causing additional trauma and distress. Moreover, the backlog also affects the justice system. Without the evidence from these kits, many perpetrators walk free, potentially committing more crimes. This undermines the public's trust in the legal system and the rule of law. But remember, these kits are more than just a collection of cold numbers. Behind each untested kit is a person, a survivor waiting for justice and closure. These numbers are not just statistics, they represent real people waiting for justice. The consequences of this backlog are far-reaching and deeply troubling. Picture this. You're a victim, grappling with the aftermath of a horrific personal violation. You've endured an invasive examination to collect evidence, a rape kit. And now, you're waiting. Waiting for justice, waiting for closure, but the days turn into weeks, weeks into months, months into years. The kit, your hope for justice, sits unprocessed, gathering dust on a storage shelf. The emotional toll is heavy, the wound, instead of healing, festers. This is not a solitary story, it's a repeated narrative across the United States, a bleak testament to the consequences of inaction. But the implications of this backlog go beyond individual victims. Consider the potential for serial offenders to remain at large. Each untested kit represents a missed opportunity to identify a perpetrator, to prevent them from inflicting harm on others. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? that someone somewhere might be walking free, unpunished, undeterred, because a piece of evidence is languishing in a storeroom instead of being analyzed in a lab. And then, there's the ripple effect on the justice system and society at large. When justice is delayed, it's not just denied for the victims, it undermines public trust in the justice system, eroding the very foundation our society is built upon. If people can't trust that the system will protect them, will seek justice for them, what does that say about our society? This is not just about unprocessed rape kits. It's about the message we send to victims when their search for justice is met with apathy. It's about the message we send to potential offenders when there is no swift consequence for their actions. It's about the message we send to society when we allow such a critical aspect of our justice system to falter. The backlog of rape kits is not just a systemic failure, it is a human rights issue. In the face of this crisis, steps are being taken to address the backlog. So, what's being done? Well, across the United States we're seeing a multitude of efforts aimed at tackling this issue head-on. There have been legislative changes for example, aimed at improving the system. Some states have passed laws requiring the testing of all rape kits within a certain time frame. Others have created systems for survivors to track the status of their kits. These changes help to ensure that every kit is accounted for and tested in a timely manner. Increased funding is another key part of the solution. Federal funds have been allocated to help clear the backlog. These grants are used to hire more staff, purchase necessary equipment, and to provide training to those involved in the testing process. 
All of these are crucial to increasing the efficiency and accuracy of testing. In addition to this, there have been initiatives aimed at improving the very process of testing. Some states have adopted new technologies that allow for faster, more accurate testing of rape kits. This not only expedites the process but also increases the likelihood of obtaining usable evidence. Now all of this might sound a bit abstract, so let's talk about some success stories. There have been cases where clearing the backlog has led to convictions. For instance, in one city, after they began testing their backlog of kits, they were able to identify and convict multiple serial rapists. These stories remind us that every kit represents a person, a life, a story. And every kit tested is a step towards justice. This brings us to an important point. While we're seeing promising signs of progress, it's crucial to remember that the journey towards clearing the backlog is a long one. Each step forward is a victory, each conviction, a testament to the power of perseverance and the importance of justice. But there's still a long road ahead. While progress is being made, the journey towards clearing the backlog is a long one. Each of us has a role to play in addressing this issue. This isn't a problem that can be solved by a single organization, or by the police, or by the government alone. This is a societal issue, and it demands a societal response. To truly address the backlog of rape kits in our country, it's going to take all of us working together to make a difference. One of the most powerful tools at our disposal is advocacy. By speaking out, by letting our elected officials know that this is an issue we care about, we can drive policy changes. We can push for legislation that mandates the timely testing of rape kits. We can demand that our law enforcement agencies prioritize the resolution of these cases. We can insist that the rights and well-being of victims are placed at the forefront of our justice system. But our efforts don't have to stop there. We can also support the organizations that directly assist victims of sexual assault. These groups provide crucial resources from counseling and legal services to advocacy and support. And they often operate on shoestring budgets relying on donations to continue their work. By contributing, even in small amounts, we can help ensure that these services remain available to those who need them most. And we can raise awareness. We can talk about this issue not just in the abstract but in concrete terms. We can share stories, statistics and solutions. We can educate ourselves and others about the realities of sexual assault, about the backlog of rape kits, about the impact on victims and communities. We can use our voices, our platforms, our influence to shine a light on this issue, to keep it in the public consciousness, to ensure that it's not forgotten or ignored. So let's step up, let's reach out, let's make our voices heard. Let's support the organizations that are doing the hard work on the ground. Let's advocate for change, for justice, for a better and safer world. Together, we can make a difference and bring justice to those who have waited far too long. In the past 10 minutes, we have delved into a dark corner of our justice system. We began by confronting an unsettling question. How is it that in one of the most advanced nations in the world, we have an unfathomable backlog of rape kits? A backlog that stretches into the hundreds of thousands, each one representing a person waiting for justice. We then examined the cold hard numbers, revealing the true scale of this issue. We learned that the numbers are not just staggering but they also reflect a systemic failure that goes beyond mere negligence. We explored the consequences of this inaction, we discussed how this backlog not only denies justice to survivors but also allows perpetrators to roam free, potentially causing further harm. We also touched on the psychological toll this takes on survivors, who are left in limbo, their traumas unresolved. We then turned our attention to the steps being taken to address this backlog. We highlighted the tireless work of advocates and the progress made in certain states. We also underscored the importance of legislative changes and the role of forensic science in expediting the testing process. Finally, we discussed how you can help. From raising awareness to supporting organizations fighting this problem, to advocating for policy change, we all have a role to play in resolving this issue. Remember, these are not just kids. They are people's lives and their hope for justice. Please like, share and comment on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.